bring in Jim Paulson, Chief Investment Strategist at the Luthor Group, uh, and on the phone, David Rosenberg, Chief Economist and Strategist at Gluskin Chef. A very uh, good afternoon to you both. Uh, David, if I start with you, this big sell-off, uh, well, buying a bond, selling uh, fall in the yields of bonds we've seen once again today, where do you see it going from here? Well, in terms of the stock market, uh, we are just uh, at this point, after having broken below uh, the 50 and 100 day uh, trend lines, we're just 3% away now from uh, 2793. That's the number uh, that, if you're bullish, you hope holds because that's a 200 day moving average. And I talk about this because this has largely been more of a technically driven market, anyways, as opposed to strictly fundamentals. So pay attention to the technicals. And, um, you know, again, if you believe that this bull market is ongoing, uh, that 200 day trend line uh, has actually completely flatlined right now. And as for bonds, you know, this is really uh, the mother. Uh, of all short covering rallies, uh, you know, we went into the month with the next speculative short position uh, on the board of trade at 363,000 net shorts, uh, and they're hurting right now. So uh, this is probably going to continue, whether you believe the fundamentals or not. There's a very strong fund flow impact happening in the board of trade in terms of uh, these massive levels of shorts being forced to cover right now. Jim, what's your take on market action? We've seen the the pullback in stocks in the in the past week, and also just the rally. Uh, well, today excluded. Uh, are you still as constructive as you were the last time we spoke, where equity markets are concerned? I I still am, Morgan. I mean, I I think um, I look at this. I could be wrong. There's no doubt about that. But I look at it more as a correction along the way. And with there, David's right. We're playing some technical levels here with that correction. Uh, you know, we've got some lows that maybe we need to retest. I don't know. But I just think uh, if I look out over the next six, six months or a year, I, I think there's good opportunities here. You know, what I believe is we're overplaying the negative impact of trade and underplaying how much stimulus we've dumped on this uh, global economy and not just the Fed cutting rates. They were the last animal in the world to, to ease. We've dramatically eased rates now. 160 basis points in the 10 year in this country. We've expanded the real money supply from 1% late last year to over 3% now. With the deficit as a percent of GDP has gone up a full percentage point in the last year. We've got three pronged uh, stimulus that you normally only see when you're trying to get out of a recession. And year to date, we're growing at 2.6% on GDP, which is actually above average during this expansion. I think with the lag effect of policy, which is we're just starting to enter that appropriate lag time, somewhere around nine months or so, and I think that's going to work and economic growth is going to pick up here. You're already seeing the Citigroup economic surprise indices in the United States pick up in the last four to six weeks. They have picked up in, in the emerging markets. They picked up in Japan. I, I, I think we're already starting to see a turn a little bit in momentum. And if that happens, then I think the imminent recession fears fade. And there's probably pretty good upside that will start from like a 160 10 year, uh, uh, quite a bit of room, I think, when you look at average P's against a very low base. So I, I'd look at adding a little exposure. My three favorites are emerging markets, uh, technology here. I'd stay with that. It's, a, it's one of the populars, but I'd stay with it. And then I'd look at financials because I think rates are going to go up over the course. David, you disagree. You don't think the Fed easing is going to deliver the type of stimulus that's needed at this stage of the cycle? Yeah, it's called pushing on a string, and we've already got the template because the bond market did so much heavy lifting uh, as it was over the course of the past 10 months with the 10-year no yield coming down uh, 150 basis points, and uh, the housing market and auto sales barely have a pulse. Uh, and that attests to the fact that the private sector in the United States uh, is just, just choking on a level of debt, and we're not going to see the big impact in aggregate demand. And even if we do, the lags between what the Fed does now is not going to be felt for 12 to 24 months uh, down the road. You know, the point I'm making about you know, uh, someone like Jim can focus on the surprise indicators. That's fine. That's the, you, you can drive looking through the rearview mirror if that's what you want to do. The OECD leading indicator came out last week, and it's declined 18 months in a row. And, and it's actually down to its lowest level since 2009. The U.S. leading indicator from the OECD down 12 months in a row. That's driving through, looking through the front window, and things are cooling off and are going to continue to cool off, and the bond market's telling you that. What does, I mean, we have three basis points. The 10-year tip yield is three basis points. 
What's that telling you about economic growth? If we're going to see a strong economy, we'd be seeing inflationary pressures going up. Instead, look at what the CRB Metals Index did today. It collapsed by more than 1%. And look at the 10-year tips at 161. They were 175 the day of the Fed meeting. The Fed is really behind the curve right now. That's the message from the bond market, seriously behind the curve. Gents, we have to leave it there, but we thank you both for your uh, opposing views and uh, look forward to having you both back again soon. Jim and David.